All right, guys. Welcome to another episode on the podcast. Have myself Brian Gold and my good friend Mr. Mike. How, How you doing, doing, buddy? Great, man. Good to be here. Happy you're here. Thanks, man. I know. I know you're a little disappointed you didn't get to wear black, though. Bro, I'm Persian. That's all we wear is black. We're like ninjas. <laughs> so. You guys do wear a lot of black. Yeah, man. I did go to Beverly, so I get it. You get it. You know, so what, what year did you graduate? Oh, five. Damn. I graduated in 96. You're a little older than me. Yeah, just a little bit. Just, yeah, just, we'll keep just a little uh, uh, Spanish up in here, huh? Bro, I know enough to order tacos and then talk shit. That's about it. So, uh, most people know you as Mike from Shaws of Sunset. Right. But let's talk about like how you got into the real estate game, like what you were doing before that, and then some of the new projects you're doing with some of the other people we know, and just kind of which way you're headed, you know, why you got into the show, give you a little, give a little backstory, and then I'll dive deeper on questions. Yeah, man. Um, so just to start off, I want you to know how much respect and love I have for you. I've been asked to do podcasts for the last year, just uh, with, with things that have been going on in my life, and I've just kept saying no, 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 but... Um, I'm glad I could be here and chat with you about my life and uh, chop it up with you for, you know, the time we have together. So um, I was in law school, going to Southwestern Law School at about 21. Um, So that was like last week. Last week. So that's that's where and finished my first year of law school, actually set the curve in one of my classes in my torts class, which is civil law, Um, only in the class. And I hated every moment of law school um especially with the school i was going through to what was so bad about law school dude i was going to southwestern law school and at that point they had a 30 percent attrition rate so the lowest 30 percent of the class got kicked out oh not no even drop out yeah. just gone kicked you're gone so imagine you're in a school that's cutthroat people are ripping pages out of the law books and if you don't have the pages you can't refer to the laws in order to plead your case as you're doing your homework and studying and whatnot, so you can understand like, like Roe versus Wade, for instance, right? If, if you don't know, if you don't have the book and you don't have the, the, the law, you can't refer to it, right? So that was happening a lot. People were really aggressive with each other. They weren't sharing notes. It was like, a, like you know, uh, like an episode of, uh, of uh, Survivor, right? And oh, they're that savage. Savage, bro, savage, right? So it was like, I just, I didn't like it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a... Left more of a bad taste in your mouth. Bad taste Even though you're succeeding well in it, yeah. just... I, I was just like, fuck it, you know, this is, if this is what I have to work with, this is what I have to work with, I, I'll just, you know, get more aggressive, and, you know, I, I'm okay with that, but I didn't like it because I'd rather work together, I'm, I'm more of a team player, and the school was creating animosity and anger and this unhealthy competition that just wasn't for me. So um, at the time, I was investing in some real estate in Las Vegas. And at the time, back then, you could put down a deposit and hold your property. That's pretty cool. Right. So I would put down $3,000 deposit, and I bought a condo in North Las Vegas, for instance. Before it was even built, I had already had 100000 in equity in the property. Right. So I'm flipping these things and making a little bit of money, you know, doing my thing. Um, so I'm like, what the fuck am I doing in law school? I'm going to be a pencil pusher, work for somebody. I don't want to be an ambulance chaser. Uh, fuck law school. I'm going to move to Vegas and become a real estate agent. So at 21, I moved to Vegas, lived there for about 10 years. That sounds kind of dangerous. It was insane. Living in Vegas for 10 years at 21. It was insane. I was a child. Your dick didn't fall off? With a little bit of money, and I thought I was bawling because, you know, I'm driving a Mercedes, and I'm fucking working out, and I'm doing real estate deals, and I thought I knew what I was doing. But in reality, I had just been at the right place at the right time, in the right market, and it was easy to make money, right? It was like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah, because this is like the, oh, This was, uh, yeah. So I was there from 2001 to 2010. Okay. So the real estate market was booming. So I hit the wave and everything was going great. Boom, market crashes and literally went from, you know, cell phone, phone ringing, you know, landline, 
busy making deals to dead. Doom and gloom and the market just crashed. So did you have any savings that you built up Fuck, or you were bro. blowing it all? Uh, out? Yeah, what savings? I was, you know, trying to be a fucking baller and, you know, girls and partying and investing in shit and flipping the money. So lost everything in Vegas, came back to L.A. Um, and I convinced my brother to rent a house together in the Hollywood Hills. So I'm driving home one day and I see one of my boys standing on the corner on Sunset Plaza Drive. And he's like, Mike, come back. I'm like, oh, fuck, I fucking want to talk to this guy. Dude, every time I chat with him, it's an hour conversation about remember wins. So he calls me, he's like, hey, come back. I need to talk to you about something that's really important. And that day changed my entire life. In a good way? Some ways. So I come back around, I park, we start chatting. He goes, hey, man, we're doing this reality show. Did you hear about it? I'm like, yeah, dude, I want nothing to do with it. Fuck that. You know, I want to be anonymous. I don't want to be on television. Dude goes, no, but you don't understand. It's Ryan Seacrest. Long story short, within a matter of a couple of days, I get a call from the producers of the show and they're trying to uh, court me. Hey man, we heard you're a real ladies man. We heard your stud, I've seen your pictures. Dude, we need you on the show. You're gonna crush it. We're gonna do this, this that, and the other. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm not interested. I don't want to do it. This guy pursued me like I'm some hot chick that he wants to bang. Literally called me and courted me for a fucking week. Let did, me take you to breakfast. Did you like Let me it? Take a I was like, this is crazy, dude. <laughs> like, if they're so adamant about me, yeah, maybe I am special, you know? And I still said no. And then Ryan Seacrest calls me. Hey, Mike, it's Ryan Seacrest. I'm like, what the fuck? How'd you get my number? <laughs> yeah, like... He goes, yeah, so you heard about the show we're doing. You saw what I did for Kim's career. We blew her up. Imagine what we do for you. You know, I know you came back from Vegas. This is your chance. Here's an opportunity. Let's just get you in front of the camera, see if you're even a natural or not. So when Ryan Seacrest calls you and the guy who was, you know, American Idol at the time, you know. Oh, the I think that guy is probably one of the hardest working guys in Hollywood. The guy's a fucking genius. He's got his hands in a little bit of everything, making money. And at the time he was a big deal, you know, because the Kardashians were at the height of their, their game. So I'm like, fuck it, let me give this a shot. And um, they had us all meet at a home in, uh, in Studio City. And there's like 25 Persian kids there, right? People I'd never met before, some people that I kind of known. And um, they started to interview me, right? And they're like, okay, so tell us about yourself. And I Blah, 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 told him about myself. And they're like, all right, cool. How do you feel about us doing like a little sizzle reel here about these two girls fighting over you and you just sitting there and you kind of like contemplating which one you're going to take? So I have this beautiful, like six foot two supermodel that works for Bijan at the time. And this other chick who's also hot that are sitting on either side of me and they're fighting over me. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is incredible. Like, is this what I have to do? Sign me up. No brainer. And you're going to pay me for it? And I'm going to become famous? How cool is this going to be? Right? So they did the sizzle reel and they picked me up. They're like, all right, you're going to be part of the show. Now, the premise of the show is that we've all been friends forever. Right? We grew Quite up. you guys were. We knew of each other, but we weren't the super tight fucking group of people. Right? Like, we were friends. Um, but in order to play ball, you know, you do what they tell you. And at the time, I'd lost everything I'd had, right? So this was my restart, restart, you know, my opportunity, holding on to something, feeling important, you know, and an opportunity to maybe launch into the world of acting and hosting and all this other shit. Because at the time, like they were paying people who were on reality TV, like 25, 100, 150, 200 grand to show up at a club, people like Paris and whatnot. So I was like, all right, this could be really lucrative, you know? So we, uh, we got green lit. We filmed six episodes and it was a lot of fun, man. Like they took us on a trip to Vegas on a private jet. We stayed at this brand new, like incredible suite that no one had ever stayed in before. Like we're the second group of people to stay in it. It was incredible. Like Hermes shampoo and Hermes soap and Hermes cologne all there for you like for us to just use and I was like this is incredible 
right? So it felt like royalty. Dinners and nuts. Six, I don't know how many of us there were at the time because they condensed it. And we but they treated you guys like, like kings. Like what we, at the time, it felt like we were being treated like kings. Because we're like, hey, we need more alcohol. Cool. Hey, we want a party. Okay. Hey, we want food. Okay. You know, it was like, and then it got to the point where, you know, we filmed for hundreds of hours and they condensed that some, a group of nerds sit in a, in a, in a bay and chop and it up, chop it up. And then they send it off to the network and network sends it back. And they're like, no, 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 no. We want to make Mike look this way, make Reza look this way. Right. And, um, yeah. So the first season comes out and the network goes nuts. They're like, holy shit. You guys are a group of people no one even knows about, a culture that has only been associated with craziness in the news, like, you know, the Iran Contra and fucking bombings and crazy shit. But people are, they're, they're, they're like. Not gonna lie, I watched the first season. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy. They were attracted to it. They're like, oh man, the culture, the music, these people, the way they dress, the jewelry. So over a million and a half viewers on our first episode, Network goes nuts. They're like, this is incredible. Our cheap investment, because they didn't, they, it was shoestring budget, right? Everything was trade out. Um, they paid you guys, I'm sure, bare minimum. Bare minimum, dude. You know, like it was a joke. They sold you guys on the <laughs> growth on, and the exposure. What if that will happen in the future, right? So we, we filmed the six episodes. Before the six episodes are even done, they're like, hey, we want to pick you up for another round. And we're willing to pay you X amount. And we're like, oh, shit, okay. Now all of a sudden, we have managers and agents reaching out to me. I'm like, holy shit, like I'm, I'm a big shot now. You know what I mean? Little did I know that they prey on people. Oh, they're like, taking uh, advantage of it. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Especially because you had went from making all this money to technically broke to now coming back. They're like, all right, we give this guy a little extra here, a little there. It's just crazy how, the, how this industry works, right? Um, so I got myself a manager, I got myself an agent and Boom, back for season two, right? Now they have us in a contract. I have to show up and I have to participate. And now, because we had the success of season one, the cast, not me, but the people in the cast decided that, you know what? Drama sells. Now these people on my, on my, which at one point were very close to me. All they would do is watch reality TV. And they're like- Persian community likes drama in general. Yeah, but these guys, like they, they fed off of they it. saw other recipes of other shows and they're like okay we need to implement that in our show so it just became a really hostile environment season two and rumors started happening and and storylines started to be created so it's just a wild ride man how many seasons did you film for i went from season one to nine and through those seasons um a lot of people got clipped new people came in like the ogs that started got clipped New people came in, some of them got clipped. So it just, it was revolving until season nine. And we became one of the top shows on reality TV. Man, one of the top reality shows on television, on our network. Because um, that was before like the Hulu programming and all of yeah, that other stuff. pre-Hulu, <laughs> right? Pre-streaming. Netflix was around. But not at the level it's Yeah, at. but Netflix was doing what wasn't creating their own content at the time, right? And they weren't doing all these reality shows. So um, it became very lucrative because uh, the show was doing so well. And because we were a group of, of Iranians who, you know, negotiating is in our blood, right? Yeah. They're like, all right, you took advantage of us for two seasons. Now <coughs> we're sick. We're not coming back. You're all sick. Yeah, we all got sick. Sorry. But you know what make us feel better? Add a few more zeros to our uh, to our paycheck, then we'll start talking. So season two, we got raped. Season three, we decided no, we're it's time to turn it around. It's time, to, it's time to turn the tables. You know what I mean? Like we've proven ourselves. Now you got to pay us. So it went on for uh, nine seasons. How long is a season filmed, dude? Um, insanity. We would film Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday from morning to night it's like a full-time job and then full-time job and then some and you guys are still having to sell real estate at the same time if we wanted to right so i'm a very ambitious person right? so you're doing both 
I came from Las Vegas where at 21 I was hustling and fucking making moves with, with, with people who were worth, you know, your type of money, you know what I mean? And then some, and then some, you know, like, because everyone was in Vegas wanting to invest because they heard about the buzz, right? So I was selling real estate, I was doing leasing, I was making syndications. So that's what drove me. I was like, this is cool. I never really, I, I wanted the fame in the beginning, then I got it, then I was like, oh man, this fame shit is- Not gonna work. It's not all it's cracked up to be, dude, because everything I do is under a magnifying glass. And then when I do do it, the internet is oh savages is is is, is, is wow man they are uh savages i just gotta ask though did you being on the show help you get laid more i never had a problem with it but, but i'm saying but it definitely helped like uh, you know it, it was crazy the attention i was getting my it, 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 the internet can make you feel insecure and secure at the same time. It's a really weird thing, right? So I'm I've not, never been in the limelight at the level yeah, you're let at. Let me explain it to you. Um, in the front, like where everyone can see, comments were fucking horrible. Mike's fat, he's short, he's ugly, he's a fucking idiot, he's a baba. Were you he, working out them or not? Yeah, as man, but they don't, you know, it's like, I don't know where they got this idea that I'm five foot two or something and said on the internet. And people believe the shit they read. And you see, I'm fucking 5'11". So like, you short, fat, fucking loser, you piece of shit, your mom's ugly, you're a dog, you're a da 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 All this shit because of what these They read on. The, oh, yeah, but editing. Oh, that too. Dude, we would film for hundreds of hours, sometimes without food, sometimes filled with alcohol, tired. Like, dude, can we take a break? You wanna take a break? What do, you, what do you mean when I take a break? We're, we're in the middle of a scene, yeah, but I'm tired. Yeah, these, these checks don't come cheap, Mike. You know how many times I've heard that? These checks don't come cheap. They'd seriously say that when you guys are like beat? Dude, beat, beat down. We're fighting each other, arguing to the point where we want to fucking kill each other, right? And we're digging deep, like fucking low blows. So imagine if, I, if me and you are having an argument and I cannot leave. And if I, oh, if I can't walk away, I'm going to break something. Bro, they wouldn't let us leave. And if we left, they would follow us. I feel like they wanted you to break something. They would follow us. And now, instead of them saying, hey, Mike handled that really well, he, he left because he was trying to de-escalate the situation. Oh, Mike's guilty. That's why he's leaving. So they edit it. And then now what happens is my story is not mine to tell. No, they told it for you in the way they wanted to. Not only the way they wanted to, the way the cast wanted to. Because everybody kind of voted together. You know, let's say me and you are having an argument and the other cast members are here just listening. All of a sudden, they're going to chime in because they want camera time. Right? You're only as good as the amount of camera time you get. If you're not in that lens, you don't exist in that episode. You don't get paid for that episode if you're not in it. So what are you going to do? You're going to fight the... Fuck yeah, you're going to fight. You're going to be the fucking person that's either being fought with or doing the fighting or doing something funny or whatever it is. So... We're fighting for that camera time and now we're a bunch of alpha people who are it, competitive. It doesn't end well. Right? And it was an, again, law school all over again, unhealthy competition. It wasn't like, let's have some fun. It was like, no, who can I destroy so that I could be the fucking crab that gets out of this bucket? Can knowing what can you knowing imagine? what you know today, yeah. are you happy you went on the show? Here's what makes me happy: that I've had people throughout the the course of of the years that I've been on television who have reached out to me and said, "Hey, man, your your story really resonated with me. Um, your divorce and the way you handled it, and 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 knowing the things that you were going through and how you." you approached certain things, really helped me get an idea of how I wanted to approach what was going on in my life with my divorce, with my happiness, with my mom, with my dad, with my brothers, whatever. That gave me gratification. That made me feel good. That's an amazing thing. Or, you know, like if I'd, I'd be a target, for instance, some guy would, you know, like six foot two, huge guy, look like a linebacker, runs down the aisle and is like, hey, Mike, what's up, man? Oh, man, I'm such a fan of yours, dude. I'm like, 
you watch my show? He's like, yeah, dude, I love you. You're the best, blah, blah, blah. And I chop it up with them for a few minutes and I give them just a, a nugget that put a smile on their face. Take a picture with them, whatever. Take a picture, dude. It, that made me happy, right? But I truly feel when you go on reality TV, you kind of sell your soul to the devil, dude, because you say and do things and participate in, in, in situations that go against your morals, your beliefs, but you do it because you're doing for the greater good of, of what you signed up for. Um, when I got started, I was, I was kind of broken, sad. I was, I, I'd lost everything and I was trying to rebuild myself. And it kind of gave me happiness because I was like, I felt important because I had makeup and, you know, people watching me and producers talking to me. And, you know, they're very smart, these producers. They know exactly what to tell you to bait you to do exactly what you need to do so that they can keep their job and then go from one show to the other because of the ratings and get paid more, right? So it's their job to create a really great show, right? If I could produce a really great show, it's like being in the NBA, right? If you're an all-time scorer, uh, rebounder, you're fucking, you know, you, you, you're, you're, you're leading this, the, the, the league in assists, Man, the next team that picks you up is going to pay you an absorbent amount of money because they saw what you you're did before. You're a fucking MVP, right? Like with anything. But people lose sight of that when it comes to this type of shit. These producers know exactly what to do to get what they need out of you. So keep tweaking it. Like, man, you're fucking doing amazing, dude. You're so handsome. You're so great. I'm so proud of you. That was an amazing scene. But hey, don't forget, MJ and Reza said this about you last week. I know you weren't here, but I wanted to remind you, okay? Oh, they said that about me? Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, Gigi was also involved. Oh, no shit. And then they'll go to Gigi and be like, Gigi, did you hear what Mike said about you? You're going to see him tonight at the fucking party. Are you going to just let him get away with that? And then you go to MJ and, and, and Reza. MJ, Reza, hey, you know, Gigi and Mike are coming after you. Be careful. So it created this like tension. So all day long, you're fucking thinking about, okay, what do I got to do? Okay, I got to- That doesn't sound like a healthy way to live. Bro, it was crazy, man. I enjoyed season one, enjoyed parts of season two, but then it became toxic, bro. Toxic. I hated, hated so, the situation. How long did it take to film each season? Was it like um, two, three months? Three months, four months. So you're fil filming three seasons a year? One season a year, brother. Oh, so you film for three months and disappear? Three, four months, sometimes five months, then pickups. Then they edit it for you know four or five months. And then it starts to... But, okay, so we film three, four months. Then, you know, the confessionals. Mm -hmm. Then we come back for that. So it's like, we're, it's, it's never ending. So we already filmed it. All right, it compartmentalized that shit. I'm done with it. Then I got to come back in a few months and then sit in a and round table, sit, sit in front of a camera and discuss all the shit that, that went on in those three, four months. And then you know how the cut's going to be because they ask certain questions to fill in the gaps. So you're like, oh, fuck, that's how they're going to do me this season. Damn. Wow, dude. So it's like, it's so how long was your break after the round table to the next season filming? few months okay so you had a little time to rest and recuperate yeah, bro, but imagine ptsd for like oh i'm sure you were if, like if for seven months out of the year you were under like 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 crazy stress where you're sh like you are you still like affected by some of that today of course it, 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 the internet is brutal it lives forever anyone anywhere can create any story and put it on the internet and people you know think it's truth um, you know, unfortunately, that's very true. And, you know, uh, I get this a lot. This is fucking hilarious. This I get a lot. Hey, man, I really thought you were a fucking asshole until I met you. Like, Jesus Christ, is that a fucking compliment? <laughs> is that a good thing? What, Should like, I be how, impressed? Why would you say that? Oh, because I watched the show and blah, blah, blah. Or the way you the way you carry yourself. You got to understand, like, when you're on TV, you got to eventually you build an armor because it's like everywhere you look, not everyone's nice. Not everyone's mean, but not everyone's nice, you know? And, and unfortunately with me, I was so hyper-focused on the negative that I never looked at the positive stuff and said, well, I know I got a hundred people saying I'm a, you know, uh, I'm the worst person on earth, 
But what about these 10 people who are telling me how my story changed their life? So it's hard. And eventually I built this armor. So I'd walk around like, you can't hurt me. You know, you can't hurt me. And, and people were so involved with the show. They became obsessed with it. So they followed oh, the story a... and, and they got so involved. And it was like, you know, it was like having a villain and superheroes in your life that you, that are real. So when people saw me, they were like, oh my God, you know, like, or, oh man, you know, like they, they would confront me and be like, oh, you're a fucking dick. I can't believe you did this side and the other to her. Like, so much behind that. Like oh, you saw a snippet of it. Were you married during this process? Yeah. So, um, I met my ex-wife while I was filming season three, no, okay. before I filmed season three. So this is before you're like completely miserable filming. Uh, it's, it's like toxic, but not super toxic, but it's not like, it's I not can't wait to get to work and hang out with these people. I love them because we built a bond together, right? Um, at the time. So I meet my, my chick, um, and accusations start flying. Like, oh, she just wants to be on the show. Uh, she's using Mike to be on the show. He's such an idiot. We're going to, and then they just start to fucking grill her. You know what I mean? And then like with any woman that you're really dating and who cares about you, she was very protective of me. So we would go film and come back. She's like, dude, Mike, you have to get off the show. You have to get off the show. The show is toxic for you. It's going to ruin our relationship. I'm like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And I think she was like 21 at the time. How old were you? Uh, 10 years older than her. Oh. So and, uh, yeah, uh, 12 years older, 33. And um, so you're like, ah, oh, you're a child. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, just let me handle it. And she's like, Dude, please, you know, and it got to the point where she's like, look, you got to choose. Is it me or the show? And looking back now, the way I mistreated her love and loyalty to me was, uh, was really fucked up. Cause she would be like, it's, it's the show of me. I was like, don't, don't make me make that decision. This is, this is my livelihood. You know, this is, I built this thing. This is we, my, this is my, this is my the past. Yeah. But we but learned from it. If that opportunity were to happen again today, would you make the decision to go part ways from whatever show or whatever business to stay with that person that you knew was loyal to a fault? Unequivocally, 100% yes. I've had, so the show ended about a year and some months ago. And over the past year and some months, I've really done most of my growth and it took me 40 plus years to become who I was. And then it took me a, about a year and a half now to really become a person who I truly respect. I love myself now. I care about myself. And looking back, I put myself through so much because I wasn't looking through clear lenses of what life should really be like. Do you feel a majority of people now forget reality TV just in general are chasing the stardom or the popularity or the notoriety versus really focusing on the inside of themselves and being happy with themselves and really being grateful what they already have. Or do you feel society's kind of turned now where everybody wants to chase what they see on social media, what they see on TV, and they don't really care about the inside. And the reason I asked the question is, for 40 years, you did Mike and that year break you had at first, you're like, fuck, I didn't want the show to end. I didn't want all of this, oh. but knowing what you know now, are you happy about the growth? Are you happy the way things, not happy the way things ended, but happy it ended so you could focus on you. Let's, let's, let's do this first. Cause you asked a really great question and, and I want to focus on that for a second with you. Are people focusing on outside factors rather than internally becoming happy? Absolutely. I was a victim of that myself, right? 
social media is making people jealous of people, of lifestyles, and situations that are fake. Your whole show was technically fake. There was realness to it, but a lot of it was exaggerated greatly. Reza would not go to a fucking vending machine and buy a thousand dollars worth of caviar just on the regular. We wouldn't pop champagne on a fucking Tuesday because we had friends coming over. No, man, we live real lives. Like, you know, uh, but opulence sells. That's why every asshole on fucking social media now is showing off their Ferraris and Lamborghinis and Bugattis and whatnot. But there's something to be said about being humble. And what's happening is the world now is chasing this fallacy and we're seeing more people dropping dead than ever heart attacks drug abuse depression random overdoses random overdoses uh suicide because of the of, of the external forces that are causing this person to feel like i'm not good enough and let me tell you i know a lot of people I think I'm the brokest out of all my friends. And not all of them that are super wealthy are happy. They no. have the cars, they have the houses. They... We know a couple. Yeah, of course, bro. So I just, I, 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 I'm saddened by it because I was once that person. I so badly wanted to fucking look rich. I wanted to look like I have it all, like I have, a, have, have it all ever, under control. Have you ever met like a really rich person? That dresses like the rich rich and he doesn't even dress like he's rich he's just he, he's just he just out. wears like three pieces yeah he's dripped out you know uh but no majority of my friends who are either hundreds and hundreds of millions or even the, in the billion mark you wouldn't even know it you wouldn't even know it they don't drive a fancy car no no uh because when you truly have it and you've worked hard to get it, what do you need to prove? You don't need to prove and you know how hard you work to get it. So you don't spend it on frivolous, stupid shit to impress people that you really don't even care about. I've got a random question with you being on reality TV. Do you ever watch reality TV now? Never. And my cast mates would get so mad at me. They're like, you're not watching reality TV. You don't understand how this works. And I'm like, so even during the show, you didn't oh, watch? Oh, dude, no, never, never. Because I knew, like, I'd be watching, like, with whoever I was with, I was like, oh, watch, this is going to happen. And it would happen. They're like, how did you know? I was like, because <laughs> it's like a recipe for a fucking, for making chocolate chip cookies. You know what I mean? I already know all the ingredients. I know how it, the order that things need to be put together and, and, and at what temperatures. It It became, it became something that i resented it's like dude this is fucking garbage how do people watch this shit that's a horrible feel but i i was jaded man because i was i wasn't happy i wasn't happy with myself i didn't love myself i was miserable i put on a front you know mike from shaw's you know and uh so it, what I, I lost a lot because of it i lost myself first and then i it, it trickled into losing but now now you're regrowing in a different yes, way. Yes, yes. By leaps rebirth, of, rebirth, 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 then, rebirth, rebirth. Look, every successful person I know has been through the wave. I've been through the wave. We all have, dude. Yeah, you, dude, you had 300 employees, right? That's a fucking fall from grace, dude. You fall and that's like, damn. Yeah, you pick yourself up and you're like, all right, okay, that hurt, but I got to get back on it. But dude, there's some mental scars that oh, yeah. are, are these demons that you have to fight. Well, it's weird that my phone doesn't ring anymore. My phone used to ring every minute. And Jay can like attest who's uh -huh. running the board right now. He, it used to be we're in a car ride for an hour and I was on 25 phone calls. That's insane. But you loved it. I loved it. But now that I'm like, and same as you, now that I'm out of it, that wasn't healthy. No. No amount of money no. is worth no. what you do to your body at that no. level. People don't realize 
the health toll you're taking. And yeah, you look big and strong, but what internal damage have you done, Mike? Can we I don't know that. Let me, let me tell you. Last, and th this is why I look like this. Uh, last night, I could not fucking sleep for the life of me, dude. I was dead tired and I just could not get my mind to shut off. Um, and it took me until 4 a.m. where I finally was just so exhausted I passed out. Um, and it reminded me of the times that I was in the thick of the show. I would never sleep. When I would sleep. What you do, live off of caffeine? Caffeine. Um, I was exhausted. I had bags under my eyes many seasons because I couldn't sleep because it was so stressful, man. It was a lot. It was a lot. And uh, it reminded me of that. And I was literally, I, I laid in bed and I said, thank you, God, that I don't have to do this every night like I used to. Like last night was just an anomaly because I lost a very, very dear friend of mine. Um, his son passed away on Friday of an overdose. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, it happened because, you know, he's dealing with some really horrible shit that's happening in his life. And uh, he just couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't handle it. And the, and the, the, the these demons got him, the, the, the drugs and, you know, just wanted to numb the pain. He, he, you know, he perished. I don't think we have enough awareness on that subject these days as well. Just because, you know, back to our original topic, everybody's chasing something that's a fantasy. That's the thing, man. And, and, and when people realize that I'm, I lost that income from the show, which I was like part of the 1% of the world. And I didn't really have to, I was working for f four months, five months, six months. And I was making what people don't even make in a year working full time, plus, plus, plus. Um, and I'm happier now than when you were making money. Than when I was making the money doing something I didn't love. So when people ask me like, hey man, what's the trick? I'm like, do what you're passionate about. The money will come. But I think you answered this before. Forget the money will come. What makes you happy yes. in yourself? Dude, little Jay, little Tay, what's her name? That, that, you remember that Asian girl from that, the one that would talk shit and like fucking shoot money and whatnot. And like, she'd like, look at my cars, look at my, you remember that girl, the Asian girl on, on Instagram? Yeah, I just don't, I remember her, Dude, but she passed away. She did? She passed away, she's like a little girl. She passed away. I, I, I saw it on the way here. I was like, hold, and I, and I this got- This just happened. This happened, dude. I have no idea who this girl is. I've never met her. She was just a character playing a role. Kind of like that catch me outside girl. That's it, dude. And played into that role. And she was entertaining and she had haters and people who loved her and whatnot, but a child, dude, nonetheless passed away. So I say that to say, we don't know when the last day is gonna be of our lives. So if we're, if, if we're spending our lives chasing instead of sitting in the moment and saying, dude, I'm so blessed to be here with you and you and being on this podcast and share my story. How amazing is that? Not making me any money. Cause this lives forever. That's it. And, and, but doing things that you love, taking a moment to breathe and just being grateful. I take gratitude walks every day, one hour a day, maybe an hour and a half. You disconnect from your phone. Disconnect from my phone. I'll do a quick video sometimes just to check in with people, but then my phone goes in my pocket. I listen to, you know, some podcasts, just whatever podcasts it might be. And chill music. And I spend the entire time giving gratitude to the fucking world, to the, to, to God about everything I have, my health, my family. Thank you, God, for being able to have a roof over my head. Thank you for nourishing me today with the food I ate. Thank you for allowing me to go to the gym today. Thank you for the people in my life who love me and support me. That's huge. Thank and you most for the, people forget that. Yeah, dude. And, and if we live in a state of gratitude, Everything comes. Everything comes. And, and we become internally happy people that can make other ar people around us happy. It's a very solid point. Um, did you discover psilocybin when you exited the show in the microdoser? Yes. And do you feel like that helped you? So that's funny you asked, dude. Like, I literally have my my Asante gummies with me. And I, I microdose 
about one gummy a day. Um, I went through a, this. This last year was really difficult for me. So 2023 was was crazy. 2022 was was pretty nuts too. Um, I actually uh, broke up with my fiance, who I thought was going to be my forever person. Like it happened. We, I, I was obsessed with her. I was obsessed with her kids. Um, I became a husband and a father like that. And I just jumped into the role. Um, and things took a turn. We, 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 the relationship became a little tumultuous because again, I was looking for, I was looking for Thank validation God. from outside sources instead of looking from, instead within. of looking from within. Right. So I would get DMS and I would respond and it wasn't always sexual, right. Or, or hardly ever sexual. There's one or two times where it was like the girls would push and I, and I responded and I shouldn't. And looking back that validation that I was getting should have been validation that I was, that I should have given myself and gotten from Paulina and the kids. Right. Um, and when we broke up, I realized because I didn't have these outside source, outside forces to keep me busy, right? So it was like, either I was hanging out with Paulina and we we're doing stuff or dealing with the house or I was dealing with these two kids, school, camp, art class, you know, I was- You were like, fully, fully fully father. So I didn't really have time to sit there and think about, damn, Mike, uh, you're not really doing anything to make yourself happy. You're fat, you've shaved your head. Seems like you've just given up. Like you're not the Mike you used to be. You're not that alpha guy that was out there really crushing. Um, so when I became single, I was like, all right, what are we going to do so that the next half of my life doesn't resemble the first half? And that's kind of what leaped you down this journey between the Asante and between the, between the microdosing, working out, carnivore diet, uh, not drinking. Did you stop completely? I'll have a cocktail Here once, there. maybe a week with dinner, like a wine. Before or a it used to be daily. Not daily, but when I was filming, every time we filmed, we pretty much were drinking. Got it. Because it was like, dude, fuck, man, I got to do this again, you know? And in your subconscious mind, you know you're not doing something that is something that a person with integrity would be doing or someone who is kind would be doing. I was a mean person. I was aggressive. I was angry. I was fighting with people because I wanted to make good TV and these checks didn't come cheap. These checks don't come <laughs> cheap. So you're like, That's like Fuck. ingrained in your mind. Oh forever. yeah, man. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I just decided it, it's, it's time for me to be the person who I know I can be. And I need to show up as that person every single day, even the days I don't want to. And live my life in that way with integrity. That's a great way to live. Yeah, man. So things just changed. You know, I uh, took me a little bit. I was, I was very sad over the breakup. I was, I was heartbroken because I, you know, I, I don't get to see my Kids. stepkids. Um, and I missed my best friend in the world. Um, but I realized uh, if I don't become the best version of myself, even if we ever got back together, it's never gonna work. It'll never work because I'm just gonna be the same shit I was. So psilocybin came into play to help me unlock and start to work on, start to think differently, help me with, with the anxiety I was dealing with. And I just got to work, man got to work and I started to chisel away at that old mic that was this big blob of fucking unhappiness and chiseled my way into I'm still not there yet it's a lifelong journey no but, but it, I'm but I'm f way further now into who I want to be than I've ever been in my entire life it's crazy though that the first 40 years of your life you're like oh I'm doing great and then things change and you're like no I want a different path and most people don't realize because I had you can change today. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter what you did the last X amount of years moving forward. You can be this person who cares who Mike was back then. Yeah. Let's talk about the Mike forward. Right. 
And to go back a little bit, being in the limelight at your level, any publicity, good, bad, or ugly, lives forever, unfortunately. And when people look it up, it's like, oh, they see this bad thing. But most people don't understand that bad thing disappeared. And Mike is working on himself, going forward, doing all this stuff. Right. And everybody wants to be famous, but they don't realize you're under a fucking microscope. Oh, yeah. And, and the stress that it puts on you, oh, it's, you it's, can't even explain. I, you know, I don't want to sit here and be like, woe is me. I made all this money. I had the, I have, I, I own a bunch of real estate and I have the cars, but oh, people are talking shit to me. Like, no, nah, dude, it's like, I, I signed up for it, but I'm human and I'm a very sensitive human. And um, unfortunately, people watch the show and they judge you on what they see. And that's the job of the network. And, and I think and that's life in general. Right, right. You know, aside from reality TV, people judge you based on the conversation you had with him. Right. And you may have had an off day and you just blew him off right. and just kind of said, fuck it. And right. then he goes and tells somebody and they're like, oh, Mike's a dick. How many times have you, or maybe never for you, but if you've seen a guy in a really expensive car and he revs it and he's like, Dur -dur -dur -dur, and you're like, oh, what a fucking douchebag. I say that all the time. Right. But when you're sitting in that Lamborghini, the last thing you're thinking about is, what the fuck this guy's gonna be thinking about me? Cause you're enjoying that moment in that car and you just had a moment where you're like, fuck, I wanna just rev this shit and drive it. It's a lapse in judgment, right? Or a moment in time where you're excited and you do something and people are judging you without even knowing who you are at your core because of something you did that they deemed to be douchey. It's a very good way to put it. Right? So I stopped being critical of people I stop judging people and um, I don't pass judgment on anyone until I get a chance to talk to them. Shake my hand, talk to me. If you walk away and say, Mike's a fucking asshole, all good. But give me the chance. How hard is it now being who you are to have a genuine friendship or a relationship? Um, it, it, or does it take time for you to slowly lower your wall? Yes. And you kind of have to be proactive on continuing to like hang out with the person. Right. But on the same aspect, every time your wall goes down a little bit and a little bit. That, and that's the way, you know, as, as a child, you know, uh, you go to the playground, you see somebody, you don't care the color of their skin. You don't I care what walk yeah, up just, to anybody. Hey, hey, what's up, man? What's your name? Brian? Hey, Brian, I'm Mike. I just moved down, you know, I moved in down the block. You want to play baseball? Sure. Do you have a mitt? Let's play catch. And that's it. Right. Um, as we get older, we, we lose that beautiful innocence about us, right? And then it's sad, but you add being a celebrity to it. Now, all of a sudden, you know, at one point, like you, man, I'd, my phone would be just buzzing. Hey, man, you want to go to lunch? You want to go to dinner? And I was like, no, 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 no. And I became a recluse because I didn't know who to trust, right? Um, so I'm trying to break that now where, you know, we have conversations all the time. We, we, we didn't know each other very well until no. just recently, mm -hmm. but well, we knew of each other. Yeah, that's right. So, um, it's definitely very difficult to make friends. And especially because I had such a guard up. Now I'm trying to lower that and just be cool with people. You know, do you still talk with any of the cast? Very seldom. We went through a lot together. It was uh, it was a very uh, aggressive relationship that we had with one another. We were all trying to outshine each other. That sucks, though. Um, <clears throat> and it caused us to wreak havoc in each other's lives. Not so much me. I, I can't say that I, I, I wasn't guilty of it, but I'm just a very chill person. I, I, I'm aggressive when it comes to business, but I'm a lover in life, friends and, and relationships. And uh, it, uh, it caused me just to be more jaded with them and more guarded because I was like, you know, I can't trust you because everything I tell you is gonna end up on the next season of the show where you're gonna try to out me and blackmail me and make me look like an asshole so we get more ratings. <laughs> right? Up, but it's true. It's crazy. It's so crazy. what's the life of Mike now? Life of Mike, um, 
I'm up at 6 a.m. Gym. Get dressed. You know, I, so get up at 6 a.m. I'm at the gym. Uh, after the gym, I'm reading 10 to 15, 20 pages of a book. Go to work. Put in some hours. Then I either have therapy. Um, I do uh, hypnotherapy. Um, I go for my gratitude walks. Carnivore diet. Raw cheese, raw milk, grass-fed meat. Um, grass-fed has no flavor. It's all good, bro. <laughs> Fuel. Fuel. Minus when you go to Craig's. Minus when I go to Craig's. That once a week, yeah. Um, but just really focused, man. Really focused on me cultivating my my relationship with my brothers, with my parents, spending time with people I really love and care about. Um, and uh, just really trying to be the best version of me. You know, this last year was really hard. Um, me but in a good way. Yeah, but I, I you know, I, I, I think you needed should, it. I think we should talk about the elephant in the room because a lot of people want to know, like um, I, I, me and my my fiance um, at the time. So much love, like uh, I can't live without you. I can't live without you. I love you. You're my person. We got into a, a, a very heated argument one night. So much so that the walls were rattling with us yelling and cursing at each other and the craziness that was happening, and, and which there. happens in any relationship. We were I've together been there. for five years and things got to start throwing, being thrown at each other. And just, you know, before I know it, our nanny who lives with us gets scared. Calls cops. Police are called. Police are called. Like, what the fuck? Bing. Our buzzer goes off behind our gate. Hey, it's LAPD. We need to come and see it. What's going on here? We, we got a call. We got a call. Okay. What did the call say? Nothing. The person hung up. Right? So 911 gets called. Then she hangs up because she realized we're just arguing. Right? But they have to show up, up anyways. So cop shows up and I open the door. Guy's like, hey, Mike, I need to talk to you. Fuck, this guy knows my name, you know? I go outside. His partner is now holding my arm like I'm a hardened criminal, like literally like where I could feel him trying to squeeze his fingers together through my through my muscle. Right. <laughs> like, like kind of aggressive, man. Don't you think like it goes shut up? He's like, oh, shit. OK. He's like, I can't really go anywhere. The, the gate doesn't open unless there's a car that goes through. I stayed quiet. The other cop goes inside. Cop goes inside. The cop outside is a. Black cop holding me, young black cop. Young white cop goes inside and now is telling my fiance, yeah, I know this guy. I used to watch a show with my ex-wife and I never liked him. I know he has an anger problem. I know he has an anger problem. She's like, yeah, we got into an argument. It's just over some dumb shit and you know, blah, 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 blah. She goes, and he turns to her and says, huh, okay. I don't believe you. And she's like, no, we just got into an argument. Everything's cool. You know, we're good. Thanks. He goes, don't talk to me that way. Don't look at me like this. This is just my side gig. I got a gold Rolex too. Is what he's telling my fiance while I'm being held outside like a criminal. Next thing I know, he tells his partner outside, cuff him. He punched her. The story just gets better, bro. And I'm thinking to myself, I weigh 215 pounds at this point, right? You punch her, you're going to break. If something. I punched her, you would see some sort of fucking something on her, right? So I get arrested, go to fucking prison. Paulina is frantically looking now for places to bail me out. This poor girl is up all night trying to figure out how to get you out because I'm just one more person in this spoke, right? right? So they take me to the holding cell. I'm there for fucking 10 hours. Before they even process before me. Before they even process me. Now I'm in the prison with fucking criminals in a holding cell, 15 guys. And this is like COVID time. You have to wear fucking like, you know. Oh shit, this was just a year ago, yeah. You have to wear a fucking mask. There's a guy in the corner coughing. <laughs> Like, I'm like, holy shit, I'm going to fucking get sick in here. This is crazy. Another guy's so drunk, he's in the corner making calls, trying to get his girlfriend's phone number. 
and he gets thirsty and there's a there's a, a, a this little like water spigot, fountain yeah spigot coming out of the wall he's got his lips around it sucking on it to get water i'm like holy shit i've hit fucking rock bottom this is crazy finally i'm sitting there one of the cops come by he goes you on tv i go yeah man now this is two cops two separate cops that have no who know who you are yeah Come here, I'm gonna put you in your own cell. Takes me out of the cell, puts me in my own cell. Finally, I can put my head down and sleep. It's like, I'm up all night with my fucking- Your heart's like, racing. Heart's just racing. I'm sleep. like, I've never been in trouble my entire life, ever. Now I'm getting arrested for something I didn't do. Finally, Paulina bails me out and- uh, So if things were so bad, why'd she bail you out? And I'm just being sarcastic yeah, yeah, at course, this point. Yeah, of course, of course. But she bailed me out. She put up, you know, it's cost me like five grand to get out. That's not refundable. They take that but, shit. That's, that's, that's the, the fee you paid. That's the fee you've paid just to get. Um, and I got diminished to a fucking criminal who didn't have shoelaces in his shoes. I was wearing a fucking hoodie. They cut the string the string because they thought I was going to hang myself. So I'm leaving like with my shoes like barely on me, um, and just half the person I I, I like feeling like less than but half the person I am as I'm leaving this. But I think people also need to realize and Paulina showed up. She spent all night yes. to get you out of jail. Yes. If things were as bad as quote unquote people say, fuck Mike, let him rock. Yes. And that's the part that needs to be said of there was love. I've been there. I've taken a bat and busted my wall my fucking house if i want to break my wall if i'm not hurting anybody it is what it is i appreciate your honesty bro because most people they hide and, no, and, and i've they thrown wanna, shit they want to point fingers but i'll tell you how many phone calls i got hey man i got into the same fucking thing with my girl we got into an argument i got arrested one of my boys who's also on television he got his 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 spouse got arrested what happened what's happened now is because of the O.J. Simpson case. People don't want to talk about it. This, the precedent is now that any time the police are called to any type of domestic violence Someone's going. call, someone has to get arrested. Mm -hmm. They have to because, God forbid, if they don't, and another incident happens, incident happens where two people get murdered because the person that was but the perpetrator. We're also in a time now where someone gets arrested, they get kicked same day. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you got booked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, yeah. But then they go and kill someone or they go and hurt someone. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, we live on like such a border and like everybody's so focused on all this stuff that doesn't affect you, doesn't matter to you. Let it go and focus on what really matters. Yeah. But what's the fastest way to make myself feel better? Comparing myself to someone who I think is lower than me or who fucked up worse than I did. So, um, it's crazy. They, they, the, the, the cop wrote up 14, 14 misdemeanor counts against me. Now, if I really did hit her, wouldn't have been a misdemeanor. It would be a felony battery, which is what it's essentially what it would be. If I hit her is a felony. It would not be a misdemeanor. It was 14 misdemeanor counts. Uh, 13 of the counts were because I had my guns stored in my bedroom instead of a safe unprotected instead of a safe because there was children in the house because there's children in the house now my door was locked and has a lock my closet which was where most of my guns were on on top of shelves so it's i also have locked. also locked the children were never allowed in the room without the nanny they knew that they don't come into the room unless mommy or mikey's in the room or the nanny or the nanny so that we could protect it but it was an oversight on my behalf. I feel very guilty about that. If anything would have ever happened to those kids, I would have, I never would have forgiven myself. And I learned a lesson. So the DV charge, because there was no fucking case, got dropped. And they made me take a bunch of fucking classes because, so I had to take parenting classes. I had to do community service. And I had to take a gun safety class. But you got all your gun rights back. I got you all got my, your guns everything back. Everything back because they, all the guns were registered to me. And the, the DV case was, was but everybody was looks at the headline of 
Mike got arrested for domestic violence, gun charges, this, this, and that. Uh, but people don't look at how it's all gone. Yeah, dude. A, m a month later, we, we went to Mexico together, uh, me, Paulina, the kids, and our best friends and their children. And some asshole on the beach took pictures of me while I'm holding my little girl. And Paulina's walking behind me and they're like, Mike and Paulina take a trip after the accusations, but minimal uh, public displays of affection and they barely spoke. They're holding a child. I'm, I'm holding my little girl because the sand is hot and I don't want her feet to burn. Her Dude, that's sanded. Her fucking hot. So I'm holding her. Paulina's walking behind me, right? And this is the storyline. So that's what happens. You know what I mean? If someone doesn't have that fame no one gives a fuck if you're on the beach no nobody or gives a shit about it you, you know what if i was just having a bad day or she was having a bad day but they blow it up because clicks lead to fucking advertisers lead to money so let me clickbait every fucking person i can and you know destroy this person in the meantime because who gives a shit they're disposable on to the next reality star right yeah, and i saw you actually post something the other day I forget the exact context, but about how the reality stars are now going back after the production companies for how you guys were treated. Shout out to Mark Garagos, who's taking this on. Mark Garagos. He's a big boy. Michael Jackson, uh, Chris Brown, uh, huge cases. And now he's heading up this case against NBC Universal and Bravo because of the mistreatment of their uh, of their talent on these reality shows, right? Minimum food, lots of alcohol, you know, unsafe environments, and it's all true, all true. And then they edit the shit out of it to make you look like a fucking asshole. And if you're their golden boy, you're good, or their golden girl, you're good. But everyone else, they get the shaft. So. That's a sad way to do it. Absolutely. So uh, me and Paulina were together after that, after the situation for almost 10 months, almost a little less than a year. But all that outside noise, man, you know, it's almost her like you family had a... got involved. My family got involved, her friends, my friends, her brothers, my brothers, everyone was like, because now everyone's talking about it. Right. And it was blown up into something that wasn't even real. And I'll tell you, till this day, I, 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 I'll never love somebody the way I loved her. And I'll never love... But there's, there's nothing stopping you from getting back together. But well, I think you're also on the journey of healing yourself completely. That's, that's it. I, do I think we'll get back together? I don't really know. Um, but I want people to understand that this wasn't like a, an aggressive, angry breakup of two people that hated each other. No, we loved each other. I mean... For months afterwards, she was texting me about how much she loves me. And she's so sad that after everything we've been through, this is the way our relationship's going to end. Because it was just unfortunate circumstance where something was blown out of proportion. And unfortunately, this, this cop who had misconceptions about me decided that he's going to really put it to me. And at the end, I prevailed. Which goes back to dropped. being in the limelight. Yeah. And which most people don't realize what that comes with. Yeah. Like I have friends of mine who are, you know, very successful business people who are trying so hard to blow up their social media. One of them's a doctor. I'm like, what is the social media going to do for you? Other than give you this negative attention that you really are not going to want eventually. Like I've told him, I was like, yo, dude, tone it down, man. I know you got the Bugatti and I'm proud of you. I know you got the Lambos. I know you got all this shit. That's fucking awesome, dude. But you just, don't need to add careful, more. Be careful, bro. Be careful because people don't want the best for you. And if they want to see you win, they want to see you doing well, but not better than them. Correct. So just be careful. And that's that's my advice to people who are trying so hard to uh, to monetize on this on this fame. I got you. As yeah. we wrap up, is yeah. there anything you want to leave the guests with? Like a final, you know, major takeaway that you've learned over the last 41 years? Um, 
follow your passion, be kind, love yourself. We all fall down, we all make mistakes, but it doesn't define us. It doesn't define us. And tomorrow's a new day and you could decide that you are going to be who you want to be at any point in life and start your life on that day and not give a fuck what anyone has to say because typically what we think people think about us is not really true because they're so wrapped up in their own minds and their own lives that they don't really give a shit what you're doing or who you are. Very wise words, my friend. Right? Thank you. Appreciate you coming on today. Where can people find you, Mike? Uh, at Mike Showhead on Instagram. That's uh, last name is S-H-O-U-H-E-D. I'll link it below as well for everybody. Cool. And then uh, if they want you to help them with real estate in Los Angeles, hit you on there. Hit me on there, yeah. All right, buddy. Show it estates. Um, yeah, we're crushing it, man. We're actually the top three teams in the entire company of over 600 agents. It's been oh, a wow. crazy- That's amazing. Yeah, it's, the past, past year and a half has been incredible, man, because I've been so super focused on just growth and uh, working hard and- And gratitude. Just, just, just being with myself, man. Dating myself and loving myself and courting myself and taking care of number one. Appreciate the honesty. Appreciate you being love. open today. And, yeah. you know, All thank love. you again for coming on, brother. I love. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys on the next one.